Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is your boy Perry Walker and today I want to talk about something that we all face in life and that is the pursuit and chase of success and relationships at all costs. Yes, I want to talk about it guys. Now, it is easy to get caught up in the pursuit of success and finding that one, but sometimes we may lose sight of what's most important to us like our soul and our relationship with God. Now, Let's clarify here. God isn't against obtaining wealth or desiring a meaningful relationship. After all, he did say, be fruitful and multiply, right? <laughs> However, when these pursuits become obsessions, they can replace God as the center of our lives, and we begin to serve the world rather than him. And that's when things can go way wrong, okay? So let's talk about why chasing success at all costs can be dangerous. And then let's turn around and talk about what happens when we align our goals with God's plans. I have five reasons why obsessing over success and relationships is harmful to you. Number one, you lose sight of your identity in Christ. When success or relationship becomes your main focus, your identity shifts. Instead of seeing yourself through God's eyes, you start to see yourself by your achievements or romantic status, which is fleeting and unstable. Now, I don't know how many times I've seen people on social media complaining about the quality of their relationships or over-obsessing about obtaining wealth. I mean, my God, it's as if they think these things identify who they are as people instead of learning to be content with what they have and cherishing the relationships they already have in their lives, right? Their family, their friends, and in some cases, even their spouses, because some people complain about them. Number two, it leads to burnout. Constantly chasing after worldly success without rest or reflection can leave you exhausted, spiritually drained, and even physically sick. I know, trust me. When we rely on our own strength, we miss the peace and the strength that God provides. Number three, it breeds discontentment. Now, the world would always try to tell you to want more, more money, more recognition, or a better relationship. This leads to a life of constant dissatisfaction where nothing is ever enough. True contentment comes from God and not from the world. Now, I remember back in 1998, I was coming up on my 10th year high school reunion and I did not want to attend because I did not feel that I was enough of a success because I wanted to go back to my high school reunion with bragging rights saying, look how far I've came, look what have I accomplished. So I, I didn't go. And now looking back on that, I could see how foolish that was, how foolish that thinking was, because it was all just vanity. I just wanted to be able to tell people, look, I made it. And to be quite honest, I don't think those people would have cared much, right? Because trust me, no one's worried about you, okay? <laughs> so don't be so discontent about what you have or don't have. Just be satisfied with what God has blessed you with, all right? Because in the end, when we stand before him, <laughs> trust me, none of the stuff that we have amassed on this planet will mean nothing because we can't take none of it with us, y'all. Number four, it damages relationships. Now, check this out, y'all. I've heard some young ladies say online that they would rather cry in a Bentley than laugh in a Toyota. Wow. Now, when you are obsessed with success, you often prioritize work or the pursuit of achievement over genuine relationships. This can cause strain and distance in your friendships, family, and even with your spouse or partner. Now, like most recently with the situation with DDG and Haley Bailey, now those two got together, had a baby together, but apparently his career was more important than the relationship. Mm. And so many people take that way out when it comes to the obsessive pursuit of success over meaningful and quality relationships. And finally, this brings us to number five, the big kahuna of these five obsessions. You risk losing your soul. You heard me. That's right. Now, Matthew 16, 26 says, What good will it profit someone to gain the world yet forfeit their soul. The pursuit of success and relationships is not worth the loss of your spiritual well-being. Once you make these things your God, they start to control you. Mm. 
and I don't want anything to control me. How about you? Now, it has become pretty clear that obsessing over worldly success and relationships at all costs can cost you a lot, even at the risk of losing your own soul. And none of us want that, right? So what does success and the pursuit of relationships that leads to marriage look like when done God's way? Well, I have five benefits to that. Number one, you find true fulfillment. When you align your goals with God's purpose for your life, you experience a deeper sense of joy and satisfaction. Success becomes not about what you have, but about who you're serving. You're glorifying God with your gifts and talents, and as a result, everyone who's a part of your circle benefits from the gifts that God has put and laid and bestowed upon you. Your marriage reflects God's love. When a marriage is built on the foundation of faith, it becomes a reflection of God's unconditional love. It's not just about the relationship between two people, but how that relationship honors God. Now, I don't know how many times the young people have come up to my wife and I at the job telling us how our relationship inspires them. Now, my wife and I work together at the same company and those young people see us eating lunch together, taking break together, they see us joking and playing and carrying on together. And, you know, they find it humorous and whatnot. And they like making a little fun at us. But at the same time, I could see the smiles on their face as we are showing them an example of what a loving relationship done God's way looked like. And my children had the benefit of seeing that when they grew up in the home. So when a relationship is done God's way, it reflects God's relationship with us. And it breeds a desire for others looking on to want the same thing. Number three, you experience peace and balance. When success is sought after in a godly way, it doesn't control you. You can enjoy your work and achievements without letting them define who you are. And you will experience peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, this really hits home with me because I started my YouTube channel a little over four years ago. And when I first started it, I really didn't mean to do much with it. But over the past couple of years, I really put a lot of energy into it. And I'll be honest that when I saw that some of my videos and still some of my videos don't get a lot of views or likes or a lot of interaction, I got down in the dumps to the point to where, man, it started affecting my family. And often my wife would tell me, just keep going, don't quit. Who are you really doing this for? And often I have to realign and recenter my heart and my thoughts towards why am I doing this YouTube channel? Am I doing it for myself to glorify myself? Or am I using my gifts and my experience being a married man for 28 years to help others, right? It doesn't matter how many people listens to my channel. All that matters is that someone who listens to my channel gets something out of it that can help them with where they're at. Number four, it strengthens your character. Doing things God way often takes patience. Woo, man, do I know that. Man, do I know that. Humility and perseverance. As you follow his path to success or marriage, your character is refined, making you stronger and more resilient. Trust me, I know. Like I just explained about my YouTube channel and especially in my marriage. Oh my God, in my marriage. The early years of my marriage, the first 10 years, my wife and I were scratching our heads trying to figure out what in the heck is going on and where are we going to go with this, you know? And to be quite honest, it was sometimes we didn't think we we're going to make it, but it took a lot of patience. It took a lot of perseverance and we had to learn some things. We had to humble ourselves and overall it strengthened our character. Both of us are the better today for sticking in there, seeking God's counsel and not giving up and trusting Christ at his word. And finally, number five, you build a legacy of faith. Now, Worldly success that's achieved with God in the center can create a lasting impact. Trust me, I know about this too. Whether it's in your career, business, or marriage, you have left behind a legacy of faith 
not just worldly accomplishments. Like I mentioned on my job, young people seeing my wife and I carrying on like teenagers. And what's even more surprising to them is when we tell them that we've been married over 28 years, I remember this one African girl, she doesn't work there anymore, said to me, y'all been married for 26 years? At the time, it was 26 years. And then she says, and y'all still like each other? <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I told my wife about it. At that time, my wife wasn't working where I work at, but uh, she got a kick out of it. So, yeah, you're leaving a legacy, and our children desires the same type of relationship that my wife and I have because they see how hard we worked, and my sons desire to be productive men because they saw how hard I worked as the head of the household to provide and protect them, right? So yes, you leave a legacy of faith behind. You leave others desiring what you have deposited in the earth and something to follow. Now look, I don't want to leave anyone feeling bad about their accomplishments. Now, I know that it's tough out there. We live in a world that constantly tells us to grind harder, climb higher, and do more, yada, 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 you know, all the above, right? And it's not wrong to want success or love in your life. But here's the challenge. Don't lose yourself in the rat race. Remember that life is more than chasing achievements and relationships. Listen, God understands your desire for success and a fulfilling relationship. But he wants you to find these things in a way that doesn't sacrifice your soul. Don't let the world define what success looks like for you. Let God do this. So trust in the power and strength of God's might. So with that being said, I want to challenge you today. Reevaluate where your focus is. Ask yourself, if you're chasing after things that are taking you away from God, start putting him back at the center and trust that everything else will fall into place. Now, this video is a lot different from my usual format. And I just want to try something different and new. Anyhow, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch this video. And I hope it encouraged you to seek success in relationships in a way that it honors God and protect your soul. Remember, you don't have to choose between success and faith. God can give you both as long as you keep him first. Now, if you found any value in this video, please give me a thumbs up and watch any more of my videos that's up in those corners up there. And if you want to take it a step further, subscribe to my channel to find out what I'm all about. So until the next time, I will see you on the next one. Peace.